What's up guys, Brian with BPS Customs here, and today we're going to talk about something that's becoming increasingly more relevant in the world of graphics cards and gaming, and that's explicit multi-GPU. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What is explicit multi-GPU and how does it differ from the way things have been done for a number of years? So basically for the longest time, both NVIDIA and AMD have been approaching the multi-GPU solution in a very similar way. Both SLI and Crossfire utilize a separate connection to allow the GPUs to communicate. In NVIDIA's case, an SLI bridge allows the two cards to talk to each other. And with AMD, all Crossfire communication is done across the PCI bus. They've only recently moved away from a similar solution to the SLI bridge, they used to have a Crossfire connection. But basically this means that you need to have your system configured to allow for SLI or to allow for Crossfire in order to have both graphics cards working on the same task at the same time. With versions of DirectX prior to DX12, something called AFR was used to render frames. Now AFR is alternate frame rendering. This creates a little bit of a problem because as each GPU is rendering alternating frames, they queue up and create a little bit of a bottleneck. DX12 introduces several new methods for GPUs to communicate with the CPU. The first is SFR, or split frame rendering. Split frame rendering is exactly what it sounds like, where each GPU is assigned half of an image, they render it, and send it to the GPU at the same time. There's no queuing of images this way. The game engine can also directly assign tasks to each GPU based on their relative power. This means if you have a system with a GTX 1080 and you have a GTX 950 lying around, you could put them together in the same system and the game engine will recognize which is the more powerful GPU and assign a proportional workload to that GPU. DX12 also allows the memory to be pooled between two graphics cards. Previously, because you were alternating the frames that were being rendered, the pool of memory available was actually only limited to the smallest amount of memory available on the cards. This means that if you had an 8 gig card and a 4 gig card, you're effectively running 4 gigs of memory. With DirectX 12, because the cards are working in combination with each other as opposed to separately, the memory is actually pooled and a 4 and an 8 gig card become 12 gigs of memory. Additionally, because the game engine is talking to each GPU independently and directly, there is no longer a need for an SLI bridge or a Crossfire PCIe connection. What does this ultimately mean? It means that different GPUs can work together in the same system at the same time because they're being talked to independently and directly by the game or application engine. This is great news for the future because it means that you don't necessarily need to buy two GTX 1080s and put it in the same system if you don't want to. If you have an old 900 series graphics card and you want to update to the new 10 series graphics card, that doesn't mean that your 900 series graphics card is now useless. You could actually put them together in the same system and allow them to perform different tasks for the same program and have a better result than you would with any one card individually. Now the ultimate test is can AMD and Nvidia cards work together? And the answer is yes. It actually doesn't matter what kind of graphics cards you have. They could be different manufacturer. They could be different GPUs entirely. They could be different memory sizes, different ages, different manufacturing processes, different religions, different races, Yankees, Red Sox, smooth or chunky peanut butter. Doesn't matter at all. As long as they're DirectX 12 compliant, they'll work. So what we're gonna test today is a GTX 1070 in combination with an RX 480. So what I did was set my test bench up with two games that run in the DirectX 12 engine Rise of the Tomb Raider and Ashes of the Singularity. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider only recently added multi-GPU support. Before that, running more than one GPU actually resulted in a significant decrease in performance. Let's take a look at the numbers and then come back and talk about it.
So, a couple very important things to take away here. One, the order of the cards matters in a very significant way. If you have a system with both AMD and Nvidia cards, it's imperative to put the AMD card in the top slot as the primary GPU. When you compare the results and see that the Nvidia card first gives you far, far degraded performance versus having the AMD card on top, it's apparent that something is going on here that wants to prioritize the AMD card. I actually don't have an answer as far as why that is, and I've reached out to Nvidia and AMD to see if I can get some answers. And if something comes up, I'll let you guys know. But for now, just make sure that if you're gonna run a similar setup, you have the AMD card first. Second of all, the results speak to the fact that explicit multi-GPU does work. However, it is kind of in its infancy and the results are uneven at best. In one case, you have Ashes the Singularity, which is a better implementation of DirectX 12 and seems to be more mature than Rise of the Tomb Raider, which seems to be more of a DirectX 11 game that had DirectX 12 support baked in afterwards. You can see that although running both graphics cards together does give a performance boost, Ultimately, it's not going to give you the same results as having two of the same graphics cards together. I think this kind of speaks to the immaturity of explicit multi-GPU, and I'm sure that as more developers hop on this bandwagon and the platform matures, we're gonna see a big increase in performance. Nonetheless, you do see that there is a performance boost versus one card. The opposite is true with Rise of the Tomb Raider. And like I said, that is likely due to the poor DX12 implementation in this title itself. I do put that more on the developer at this point, and it's certainly possible the future patches and releases of Rise of the Tomb Raider will improve the support. But as you can see, the results here are not great, even though it does prove that explicit multi-GPU is functioning. And I guess that's kind of the point of this whole video. Can you get an NVIDIA card and an AMD card to talk to each other and work together? So what does the future hold for explicit multi-GPU? So as more and more titles release using the DX12 API, we're gonna see better and smoother implementation of explicit multi-GPU. I think eventually we're gonna see Crossfire and SLI be completely done away with. However, I do think that's gonna take quite a while, so don't go throwing out your SLI bridges anytime soon. Do you guys have any questions about explicit multi-GPU or maybe about this system behind me or any of the other videos I put up on this site? Hit me up on Twitter or down in the comments below and let me know. I'm always down to answer some questions or try to help people out. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.